I'm going to address this uh, issue of, uh, yeah. Mentioning uh, in the beginning because initially I didn't know what the room four is. Yeah. The room five. Uh -huh. So when you enter, um, when you get off the elevator, mm -hmm. that's what I would like to see. The, a small map, I would say. Okay. Where to go? A map. Yeah. A map, a map, my kingdom for a map. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> any anybody else has any suggestions that might compete with this one of our having a map? Yes. Or keep it in the way to a canteen so that when people go to it, they will use it. <laughs> People are on the way to the canteen, so you might hijack them before they get to the canteen. Just to wave some food at them and along the way just pull them in <laughs> to the room. Great. It's the order of the room, right? Yeah. It's like two, one, three, five, four. So it's exactly. You're on the other side and that's five. And uh -huh. then you feel like you've passed four. Uh -huh. But then you say, okay, it's four to the end and then you come back, it's five. So okay. It's so. You mean number it differently? No, no, number not in the order. Okay. Ah. So it's like two, one, two, and then one, then three, and then five, and then the last one is four. Ah. And you're saying it should not be that? Yeah, it should be like just in one to two. It should be sequential. So, yeah. Okay. I think the space is small enough that if I find it interesting, I'll walk across. But I feel like the title is not really very intuitive for somebody. To figure out what's going to be branding. Different. We have a branding problem, folks. <laughs> How could we brand this differently? Brand differently. Yes, maybe that's the thing. Meena? Hi, Meena. How are you? That's okay. Please join us. And uh, as punishment for not finding it, you're supposed to tell us a joke. Yeah. <laughs> it could be about three, well, three anything walking into a sorry. Okay, three anything walking into a bar would be a good in three. Ex are you really serious? No. <laughs> no. Thank you. Anybody? No. Okay. Folks, thank you for uh, uh, all the suggestions about branding as well as uh, location and maybe any other dimensions. Uh, welcome to the how many edition of UX India is this? 14. And how many edition of uh, uh, our industry academia fusion? Sorry? Fifth one. I've been associated with a few of these. It's always been a lot of fun. And I thank the folks for dragging me back from, you know, I'm, I'm retired and raised around the fields. These guys just pull me my red tail and bring me here. And it's uh, always wonderful to be with this panelist each and every time. A few of them I meet regularly, like Prasad, but today we have the pleasure of uh, an entirely new panel. And this is about this, this uh, you know, we talk about design. Uh, we are all interested in getting this good, great design out into the world. And to get uh, great design into the world, what you start with are patrons of design. Uh, in, in, in ancient times, it used to be kings and emperors, and today we have corporations and organizations. They are patrons of design. They say, we want this design. And to serve those patrons of design are designers or design outfits, design organizations. And those design organizations, in turn, go turn to design institutions to, to get trained designers. And these design institutions, of course, reach out to the vast population. And then the whole thing comes around, and the design patrons feed this design into the, into the world, and, and so on and so forth. So two key players in this game are uh, the design patrons and uh, the design studios and the design institutions, because they're responsible for creating uh, these designs and as also the designers. There's often this conflict bet between um, organizations and academia that, you know, on the, 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 the companies, organizations, they say, you don't train those students out there well enough to meet our needs. We have to spend six months to a year training them. On the other hand, uh, academic institutions say our job is not to train, our job is to create thinkers, designers, people, citizens of the world, who can transform the world. Training is a secondary aspect, it's necessary. So this goes on, and it's there in every discipline. Uh, but design for us is very important, very critical, because it's transformational. And this conversation, rather than debate, if you will, and fortunately we have here, people who have experience in both industry as well as academia. And uh, what the way we would do it is each of these folks will tell you a little bit about their perspectives, maybe for three or four or five minutes, uh, max. 
and then we get into a QA. and a Okay? I expect the students to ask a lot of questions, I hope, freely. And then if that slows down, we'll come back and have them pitch a few more things and we'll go back to you and so on and so forth. And that seems to have worked in the past and hopefully it'll work this time. Otherwise, we'll make it up as we go along. Okay? Sounds good? <laughs> okay, why not? Uh, so, 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 you know, she, she insists that you start, otherwise, start. <laughs> then you might be declared to be sexist and so on and so forth. It doesn't matter, you know? So, you know, don't get into that minefield. Just stay away from that, okay? So, uh, yeah, um, just introduce yourself very briefly, who you are and which uh, your affiliation, and then you can make any statements you wish regarding um, what industry should do or what academia should do or what they expect. Either way, okay? It doesn't matter where you start. And then after a couple of minutes of that, pass it on to Prasad and then Steve and then Nina. And then, uh, yeah. So, uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I think we are starting this discussion after the meal and everything. So, uh, let me, uh, I am actually, uh, in my career, if I see, 80% I was in industry and now, last six years I have been into academics. You haven't said, told us who you are. I am mean, Shakti Banerjee. Uh, okay. uh, right. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Sorry, sorry. Right. Uh, I wasn't attentive. I am Shakti Banerjee. Right now I am heading immersive media design in MIT ID. It's MIT Institute of Design in Pune. Right? I was also teaching in NID, and I'm also uh, passed out alumni of NID. Right? So, uh, as you said, that is a discussion about for academia and the industry. I think we are missing one major stakeholder mm -hmm. in the dais, on the dais, which are you, <coughs> students. I think they also should be represented here, because it is for the them, right? Mm -hmm. Bigger stage, right? And I think uh, that is very important when we talk at in terms of the growth, in terms of how we inculcate the young designers, young uh, students to get into industry. We have to take their viewpoints also. Mm -hmm. That is my feeling. Mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, as I have come from the industry and uh, now I'm enjoying the teaching because I can see there are, because of the young minds, you also learn. So I am a big learner, I am actually a learner, I am not a teacher, but I am a learner, I am a faculty, but I do learn. So I think uh, that is what, and another, if I say, another stakeholder I would say, if I go as a systems project or systems thinking wise, yeah. I think another, we should involve management of any education institute. Mm -hmm. So that's another very big concern for uh, uh, this uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, if I take some more time, or you first. Yeah, yeah I actually pass it on and then we come back to you. Yeah, if you want. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, guys. My name is Prasad Bhattacharya. I uh, run an organization called UG Designs in Pune. We have presence in Bangalore. Uh, we started. Uh, Footing was in the Bay Area, uh, where the whole user experience design uh, uh, wave to come. Uh, seen education there, seen the industry there, seen the education here and the industry here. Uh, one of the things that I would like to kind of uh, focus on today is the internships. Internships has just become a tool for uh, the, the academics to say, okay, you go to the industry, spend four or five days, few months more, and I think you should learn what industry is all about, but that doesn't really happen. Uh, there is a completely different ballgame that happens in the industry. And as Jack Wills has also said, that you would not know what happens in the industry when you are doing education. How can we bridge that gap? That gap has always been there, and it is continuously increasing because today, as you know, right, last time in the last conference, we never spoke about artificial intelligence, machine learning, VR, AR. This conference we are talking about that. Yeah. Next conference we will talk something yeah. else. Yeah. Academics on the other hand, yeah. especially in India, in the last three years we have seen some growth in user experience design. But user experience design came to India in probably 2000. 
So then with that gap, 10 years of gap, it did not produce enough designers. And so there are no, no entrepreneurs or educated industry people getting back to the education system and teaching students. Even today there are good design institutes, but barely any uh, good uh, teachers there who could teach the students. And so the output is still weak. When these people come to the industry, there's a big gap. Industry has high level of expectations. I'll just sum it up. Uh, there are projects that uh, are done in academics. So let's say you are supposed to make an app, you know, come up with a food delivery app. It takes about four months of a project. But the same food delivery app when you do in the industry, you get about two to three weeks max. What does it make? What does it mean to really do that job and yet get a good <coughs> accolades from the customer, those things is something that I think both are responsible to reduce that gap and let's talk about it as to how we could do that. Hi there, I have to hold the microphone uncomfortably close <laughs> to hear me. Um, I'm losing my voice so I apologize for that. My name is Steve Fadden. Um, I've worked mostly in the industry for the past 20 plus years, but I've had um, relationships in academia as an instructor or a lecturer. For the majority of those years, I worked at five different institutions, and I took about a six year pause and worked in academia at a small nonprofit organization, small college in um, Vermont, in the United States. Um, I have two stories that, that come to mind as I think about these different themes and these different topics. One is that I recently finished um, celebrating the fact that one of the, the mentees that I work with has just landed a position as a researcher in user experience at a, at a firm in San Francisco. And she was having a heck of a time trying to find a position because she has a PhD from a very well-known um, uh, uh, institution, thank you. Um, <laughs> don't want to reveal the, the name. And she actually served as a postdoc there for a few years. And I think as a result, when she started trying to apply and going to user experience, they, they treated her as though she was radioactive. <laughs> because nothing says don't employ me because I don't understand industry better than a PhD and a postdoc. I think the very fact that we are at a conference where it's elegant, eloquently been stated that we constantly are seeing shifts in the industry and the people who are the vanguard of seeing these changes, in fact, are ushering in these changes through their experiments, through their demonstrations, through their um, explorations, it's academics, and it's academia, and it's students. And the fact that somebody with a doctorate and postdoctoral experience would be seen as a person not hireable in the field of user experience is absolutely crazy. So she and I worked on a game plan, and, and actually, as a result, it, worked out, thankfully, and she, she landed the position. The other thing I'll mention is there's a trend that I've been seeing, and this is over probably the last decade, where some industrial organizations, some companies, are using academic experience as a proxy for learning how to live life as an adult. So back when I worked at Landmark College, we referred to this as the hidden curriculum. Nobody's going to put it on a rubric that you're expected to play well with each other or that you're expected to not cheat. Um, usually that's in the academic code of conduct. But one thing a lot, of, a lot of folks in industry, I believe, don't have a good understanding in is that when we go to college or university, we're not being explicitly trained in how to work well with others. But I know many companies that, for example, require a master's degree just to get in. Doesn't necessarily mean master's in design or master's in research, but a master's because that serves as a proxy for maturity for how to act in a company. The fact that we're looking at advanced degrees as proxies for maturity makes me nervous, primarily because I'm an educator and I know how hard it is to have as part of your rubric what group work looks like, what timeliness looks like, what um, putting in a fair contribution on your project looks like. So I'd love to see better fusion between industry and academia as we try to solve these soft curricular challenges in addition to the hard ones like the new advanced topics that are coming. So I look forward to chatting.
smiling because that's kind of thing of what I can add to this. This is great. I you can subtract. That's fine. Yeah, subtract. No, actually, I actually passed the mic to Chef because I like to be the closer. So, um, my name is Mina Kozandrana, and I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, in the United States. Um, and thinking about my experience, I'm a 27 year qualitative research practitioner. Uh, I work uh, with my partner Zola Rudin. Um, in Boston for trading fish research practice. Um, and I also teach at Bentley University um, in the graduate program for human factors and information design. I'm trying to think about what has just been stated between the three of you. Uh, and I realize our program was established very differently because it was intentionally established with the sheer expectation of wanting to bridge the gap between academia and industry. Um, so it's largely made of non-full-time people. Um, so I'm an adjunct, I'm not there full-time, but I've been with the institution for 18 years now. And we've really built the program ground up to make sure that what we're delivering is pretty much what we're doing. So when I actually look back at the way I've taught my course, I can see how my thought has evolved. So back to what Chucky was saying earlier, um, is I love the course because I think I learn more than actually sometimes my students do. And I always tell them that pretty overtly as well. But it's a good feeling to know that we're sort of evolving practice, but also taking that input from students and really putting it back into the program, but also putting it back into practice. It's like this continuous sort of vicious circle of sorts. Um, but I think what's been very, very uh, almost apparent, because I don't worry about where we stand in you know, uh, comparison to other colleges and universities around the world. I, I really don't bother about that. But more importantly, what I think is really apparent is it's really important for people to feel a sense of just overall process of what they're learning and be able to actually map that to something that they can just start with as a baseline when they go into industry. And then our ask is, and at least I know definitely my ask is, but I'm, I'm very you know, confident my colleagues do the same thing there, is challenge everything. So I always like feel bad when students come up to me and go, hi, I'm a you know, student, and, I'm new and I don't really know that much, and I'm always like, yeah, like that's awesome. Because that means your job is to challenge people like us that have been around the block a lot, because we can get complacent in our ways sometimes. And I think it's really, really important as a student to know that that is your role, and you have all the right to challenge us. And I love that, because I think as we see that with our students, just giving them that baseline, um, makes a huge difference in them being able to say, you know, I've started out with this and you know, I realize that some of the stuff might not be true or hey, it's a little bit different if you're in industry, you know, A, B, or C. Um, so I think that's the part that has been very impactful uh, in terms of my experience. Um, and I, I, I hope that continues and I hope people, and I've now seen some of the students that I started with 18 years ago are now like leaders in the practice and are saying amazing things. And they come back to my classroom and they share things. And they're like, I used to sit here and I used to wonder, I don't know anything, and now I'm out there and I'm saying things. And I would encourage all of you to do that as well, um, to go out and share your thought. Don't ever feel like, well, who would want to hear this? Because it's always good to even hear the most basic of messages um, by anybody, because it's good for us to hear those words. Great. Hang on a bit. So I'm going to play literally by ear. Okay? So I'll, I'll, I'm going to raise a question or two, and each of you could address that in any way you feel a deep effect. Uh, now, all of you have gone back and forth between industry and academia. Each of you separately, what's one thing you've noticed lacking in academia, which they need to fix as far as this interface is concerned, and one thing that is lacking in, in industry that they need to fix that could help bridge this gap? It could be anything, it could be the most or least important thing, whatever springs to mind. If you want to wait and think, you could uh, pass it to wherever, and then, then you could you. subtract from them. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, culturally, if you see uh, going to school, colleges is always about studying. And so we study the subject matter expertise. So we would probably go and study science. In this case, we all go to a design school and study design. Um, so, and all of us sitting here, we would know that design is all about crafting and creating user interfaces, wireframes and visual design and series of screens and putting them into the mobile and mocking the, the, uh, the designs. And then you get the feedback and probably you have a jury, everything goes well. 
uh, but that doesn't happen in the industry. When you, when the industry and the customer comes in, he would be having a business problem. And very rarely it has happened. Very few students get the opportunity to go to an actual customer and really understand the pain points. And then the output may not necessarily be an app or a website that typically gets as an assignment to the students. So I would encourage students to really push your professors or go out yourself and get hold of a real customer and a real design problem that they are facing and they want a designer to probably help them because they don't know what they really mean when they want a food delivery app or a, or a rental app and what not today that I see as assignments that students come up with. So that's number one. Number two is also about the timelines as I mentioned. Right? For a small app it takes about four months to deliver probably, that's an assumption, but uh, that's not what happens in the industry. So timelines are very important today. Uh, so most of the students whom we hire, uh, they are good in their uh, uh, you know, design skills. Uh, but uh, when it comes to being able to put them, I wish today there is a major dearth of designs, designers in the industry. And if there is a designer whom I see, oh he is awesome. But if I have to put him on a real life project, I have to hold back. Because of these, one is the, the business, understanding the business and the ability to talk to the customer and have conversations and number two is the timelines. Ability to translate the design and stand up and say, okay, this needs to be done in one month because of the budget, the timelines, the launch period, whatnot. Uh, how sensitivity, uh, what's the sensitivity that you have towards being able to plan <coughs> research, maybe a week, maybe a two, can't go for a month, for example. So, Maybe the professors as well as designers should start working into business understanding and the project management or understanding of it. These are the two pieces which will make you extremely successful in your interviews when you go and attend an interview in the industry. Design anyways, you are designers, that's your forte, we are anyway hiring you for that. But these two pieces according to me are very important for you to start learning. Push the envelope, ask your professors to start teaching you fundamentals of project management and uh, business management. <clears throat> so, uh, why I came to academic is I think uh, I found uh, there is a gap between the education as well as in the industry. Because generally what happens when, in, out of my experience, I was into branding, I was into publication, I, was, I came into visual effects, I was doing a lot of interaction projects. And those are very different, different uh, nature. And in that all nature, I find whenever designers come as a role, they find it difficult to fit into the uh, work in a team. And which is very important. When I come to the academy, I find the students, they are taking it very uh, kind of a, in the world, of course, you are a protected world. You also think very uh, imaginative, but also, as you mentioned that, you have to understand the timeline, you have to understand how to work within a team. Because as an industry, you have you are not be like alone. Okay, it's my idea, I will boost my idea, and somebody is not understanding me, all that doesn't work. You have to see what is the uh, culture there as an industry and what is the demand there, and you have to make your space. That is more important. And that's also, you have to make it as, in such a way that others should accept you. And that's how you grow up. And that is very important. I think we are sitting right now, it is very nice that in the future also this will help. And we, it is a continuous process, I understand. It's not that we are just discussing and that's it. We, we, might, we might be, we know as a management says that, okay, if you found, found the problem, that means you are half the, you have solved, solved the problem. But what is the next step? What we are going to do? I think that's what I am concerned and we should talk about. And I'll just add because you also mentioned that if what is what we expect from the, the academics, what is that the industry could do? So I remember that maybe it's too much of okay, students don't do this and students don't do that. That's not the point. The point is also that the industry could also do a lot more. When interns come in, most of the time, uh, what I've noticed is uh, the, the, the internship starts, starts at, uh, let's say, 1st of January. 
and within the one week, uh, the students uh, may not be prepared as to okay, what should I do? And usually the industry does this, right? Intern agya hai, so let him, uh, you know, just assign him any project, assign him as an assistant to any project. Two three months have gone by and they don't even know that okay, what did they learn? Uh, but if the professor, the student, and the industry mentor could come together and chalk out a plan that okay, this is what he or she would learn, that would be awesome. And again, I'm saying the students could push for that. Number two, yeah, whether you're going for an internship interview or a job interview, equally responsible are you for you should interview the interviewer. Really, is he the right mentor for me? Is he going? Is he or she, of course? Uh, has has the basic knowledge to groom me in the industry because there are lot not lot more experts UX experts in the market uh, people who have who know that oh UX is very important oh you are a UX uh, designer come join my team but in the process they may benefit but you may not so I would say one mantra that I would leave this Mike is start interviewing the person who is also interviewing you that will benefit you a lot. <laughs> wow, the look of fear and alarm and shock and dismay. I want to be closer. Okay. I'm actually, um, this is an, it, it's a difficult question for me to answer because the gaps that you're citing, we've already solved for. Ah, maybe so, you could address, I mean, why don't you yeah. talk about So, if that's fair, that, 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 you should just drop the mic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the way, so, I can speak to the way we do it. I also know how other institutions do in the United States and Canada. But the way we've really built this program is based on a very strong bridge with the outside community. And so it's in not what form does that take the bridge? So in my course, so again, I, I'm just about the qualitative research course, and in my course, it's actually conducting research from start to finish. Mm -hmm. So I tell my students, I'm like, when you come to the course, you know, buckle up, get ready to go, because we're going to basically be learning everything you need to do to leave this place. So that if somebody approaches you and says. I have a research question and I need answers, you know exactly what to do. And everybody sort of is like, yeah, sure, but at the end of it, that is totally what they can do. The reason is, is we, I make connections in the industry and have people bring in their actual problems. So sometimes it'll be a nonprofit, sometimes it'll be a startup that maybe can't afford larger services for research. I get them involved in our program. We've also had larger companies like you know, Salesforce and um, Walmart and Amex and people like that as well. Um, which have, you know, they always pose different issues. But we make sure that the stakeholders can join us in the classroom. We make sure that the students have a chance to learn how to ask questions of those stakeholders. Um, that in and of itself is a huge learning. Um, and they actually have to conduct all of the research with the minimum, you know, end and sample that we've set forth as part of the stipulations of the program. And they actually have to conduct the research, come up with findings, present the report, and then actually present it to that panel of stakeholders. So we have them come back, visit with us, students present to them. I'm just basically a proxy for bringing it all together. Um, but what's been very, very impactful is the students do go not only with um, a sample project for their portfolio, but one that they can actually speak to very personally, at a very personal level, in terms of the process that they've gone through, in terms of the challenges that they experienced, in terms of the learning that they've come up with, which I think is one of the most beautiful things for me personally to watch because it's great to see people go through that journey. So in some ways, a lot of the things that you're calling out, they're very doable. Um, I think what has to happen, and I don't mean this disrespectfully at all, but what has to happen is everybody, all the egos have to be dropped. <laughs> when you actually try to connect people together, um, people from the industry shouldn't come into academia with a bit of a, hey, I, I know my stuff, so you, know, you better have something good to show me. And vice versa, you know, academia shouldn't be like, we're, we're the academic. So I think that is a really, really important thing that I've noticed that's made our program really successful. I know with my course, I really appreciate the bridges that we've made with all the people that have come into the program. They're quite excited because sometimes they can go to outside people. When they get the students, they know the students are just so you know, fired up to do the work that the quality of the work that they actually produce is outstanding. So it's, it's sort of been very, very successful for us, and I think honestly that's why I teach that. May I, like an aggressive TV talk show host, sure. inject a note of skepticism into the proceedings? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
by the two, you've achieved the holy grail of uh, everybody dropping their egos. Uh, and, and two, uh, how do you prepare them for any situation? I mean, whatever happened to lifelong learning, just in time learning, and all those other buzzwords? I, I think, well, anybody who attended my session, I sort of could dance to the turn of my own drum. So I basically tell people, uh, you know, this is what I do, this is the way I operate, you know, my work. Okay. Um, sometimes you have to call the bullshit meter, I'm sorry, so you call it, and that's what you have to do. But you basically, you're, you're bringing in that reality because I'm not. I'm not just purely academic. In fact, I'm less academic than I am more practitioner. So sometimes when people are like, yeah, I don't, you know, and we have people in our course who are actually part-time, um, part-time, you know, practitioners themselves, and they've sort of come back for a graduate degree. And sometimes they'll be like, yeah, but it doesn't work this way in my organization, and my question is why? Mm -hmm. So I don't mind asking that question. I also don't mind calling it out when, so you can either be miserable in the way you're doing your work, um, or you can do something about it. And that's a choice that you have to make, and it depends on how much you want to advocate for yourself and for the profession and for the processes that are all involved. Um, and those are hard questions to answer, and sometimes it does put people on the spot, but I never said I was a nice professor. I just said I was a professor. So you got to put yourself out there sometimes, and that, that tension is always going to be there, but I also believe that tension does lead to, lead to solutions. So. I feel like you're a better closer. <laughs> no, no, and, and and then he, you know, he I wish, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wish. Um, no, I, I, I've been thinking about this the whole time, and really the, the I think on the on the academia side, I would like to see more what I would call cognitive flexibility as part of the intentional curriculum. I think. I think academia has a has a has a rap. It's a bad rap, and it's earned for teaching the right way. Right? And in industry, especially companies that use buzzwords like agile, lean, just in time, often the answer is we don't have time, we don't have resources. Also, the right way doesn't work, so that's clearly not the right way. So you have to invent a new way. I think academia spends a lot of time teaching the right way and not enough time allowing exploration of other ways. I think that's where the egos come in on the academia side. Um, and I think there's a huge opportunity for academia to change there. Um, on the flip side, I think that industry has a demand to be more transparent and more visible and clear about what the expectations are that they need for a specific position or a specific field. Um, one thing that comes to mind is every, every semester when I teach, I always have a situation where a student, um, I have a pretty hardcore policy in terms of when things are due and when I will no longer accept anything, no excuses, no extensions, don't care. Um, and my, my reasoning is because you know on day one when everything is due and you can decide, is this a priority or is it not? I have, I've had students who've had crazy health situations and all that. I'm like, it sounds like you made the right priority. You, you prioritized right, you're gonna get a zero on this assignment, but I'm glad that your family's healthy and okay and you're with them. Um, industry needs to make clear that expectations for things like prioritization are, are critical. And what does prioritization look like? I don't think we have good examples of that, but we always talk about stack ranking and things like that. So that's a clear expectation. And there's one other expectation. I think this makes us all susceptible to biases and I think, Mina, you're talking about it, it's the, the ego notion of, as an academic, I know truth when I see it. And as an industry person, as an industry expert, I know somebody who can kill this job. In reality, if I can't articulate exactly what I'm looking for, including the fact that your portfolio has white space I don't like, or you mumbled during your presentation, or I get that you understand all the book learning, but I don't want book learning. I want people who've proven that different approaches have worked. I don't think we in industry have done a great job of making those clear. I think we've done a great job of saying, you need to know the following skills and the following things. And I might even put something in there that says flexible thinking. But I think we're not being honest in terms of what we're truly looking for, which why there's such a gap when students are looking for jobs and why I often find myself saying, you know, maybe instead of a job immediately, you should be looking at some contract opportunities or some nonprofit NGO work 
where you can just demonstrate that you've done this stuff. Because I don't know that we in industry really know how to articulate what we're looking for. We just kind of know it when we see it. And that's, mm. that's where the biases creep in. Okay, great. Now, before we continue, yeah, that's, if we, maybe a little uh, round of Q&A, and then, then we can come back and have another round like this. Okay? So, uh, questions or comments, and we'll start with uh, Nachiket. If you can just keep it short, e either it's a comment or a statement or a question, and keep it short, and if you want a response from, you can specify if you want it from any one of these uh, panelists. Transportation and product design, uh, done a lot of activities in uh, user experience. Okay, and now I have a uh, small take in terms of whatever we are discussing in the in the gaps domain. Uh, major thing is that we we distinctly see a divide between uh, India and the West, where as you rightly said, you have evolved your uh, methods of teaching, and also the industry has evolved, and both of them have evolved together. So that gap is a big gap to breach, breach, and it will be good that we learn quickly uh, and and take that jump. Having said that, in India, I think the perception about UX is skewed. So that needs to be corrected first. So that is a big gap. Who is responsible for that? Uh, both, both, mm -hmm. both. So when you talk about UX, you talk about um, apps and screens. Mm -hmm. It's not that. So, so when uh, the, the academy also talks about it, or the industry also wants people from that background or that skill, that's also is a big, big problem. So uh, there are a lot of uh, UX work which is uh, done and re been required in product and transportation design. Okay. So if you, if you want to have a good product uh, or, or a good automobile, there's a whole hell lot of research which goes on which can be termed as UX. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is the first perception issue. The lines are definitely blur, uh, blurring. Uh, second point is uh, skills and thinking. So uh, between the two in the academics, you have to have build skills and you have to build the thinking component. So these two gaps also have to be distinctly seen and addressed. Uh, background of students is, is also uh, getting equally important because since the blurring or the reduction of engineering as a field is going down, uh, design is emerging. Mm -hmm. So what kind of student should come for design is, is important. A prelude to that, that is people should start young. So the academia and industry should really go back to school in terms of before 10th, 10th grade, at least to sensitize people about what is design. That will help people to have better user experience designers as we go along. So that is, that is another thing. Um, so another bad thing which is happening, according to my um, uh, perception, is since the engineering has lost its sheen, uh, almost all engineering schools want to start design. So every engineering school in India today has a uh, design department. It's not a school. So they, they start with 30 students or 60 students and only two departments get uh, established. One is UX, which is attached to computer science department and product design, which is attached to mechanical engineering. So this also is a very, very uh, distinct shift in India, which is seen all across the country. So that also at times is a scary thing, but at times it has big potential for all of us who are in the field to uh, give them a right direction. Mm -hmm. So that gap is absolutely outstanding. It, it, just in a place like Pune, where there are 50 engineering colleges, 25 of them have started design schools just this year. So just imagine the chaos which has been there. I'm only talking about Pune, under Pune University and all the private universities which are coming up. So that gap is, is very, very important. Uh, last thing, sorry I'm being um, very long. Uh, the industry projects as classroom projects is the need of the hour, not the internships or the, the projects. That will come. There's no, no problem about that. You should have small projects which the industry also should, should come out with and the students should do. So the weeks. industry should come with projects and give them to students with, that small, they work small on projects. in the school? Okay. Small, small projects, not the complete, complete project. Yeah, yeah. Then there is another thing from the management side of the design schools is uh, the syndrome of gray or no hair. So I'll explain, gray or no hair. Okay. So yeah, no hair and gray hair. Mm -hmm. So uh, typically what happens is, uh, in the traditional uh, teaching methodology, mm -hmm. uh, experts are supposed to be old. UX as a field itself is very young. 
So the management or the design schools also this should is a, accept. This is a cultural problem. Cultural yeah. problem. Okay. The, yeah. student, the school also should accept that even if a user experience designer who has worked only 10 years is good enough to give gyan to the coming up generation because it's the uh, information which is now and then. Okay. So that's, that's the, I think, Okay. That's a lot. That's Thank, thanks thank a lot. You. Does anybody want to respond or react? Encourage. Like mm -hmm. myself, I encourage you know students to do the real projects because the real projects give you. What is a real project? Means get the project from the industry, but mm -hmm. but may not be uh, real in the terms of deliverable to the client, but as a real as a brief. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that that works. Not a toy problem sort of thing. Mm -hmm. like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but but it will be like a. Actually, they work on the real projects, okay. and they might uh, get the feedback from the actual mm. client also. Okay. Right. So, and uh, this way, if you encourage in everywhere, I mean, uh, it happens sometimes with, I have taken it, initiative like that. Yes. But many, uh, many of them, they are not very comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I think we should encourage that as a industry also to come forward and give it the project to the students okay. because industry always think that okay we are not very much we have time bound and mm -hmm. we so maybe the time bound is real it's a reality okay. but within that also if you can manage things it will be good okay. right okay. and one one more thing is like it's a, actually if i say it's a the old story of the hare and the tortoise, uh, rabbit huh? <laughs> tortoise and rabbit mm -hmm. yeah that's the whole story right yeah and uh, now we should not talk about who's rabbit and who's tortoise and who's running fast, but we should together, we should talk about the situation and how to cope with that and we can run fast. And together we build up the whole community as well as the fortunity. Yes. Okay, good. <coughs> Thank you. I was just going to add to that, if I may actually offer what we've already learned from, so you can avoid the Hey, the you, should, you should be heading the task force on transforming <laughs> industry-academia um, relations. I would actually just amend your statement a little mm. bit by saying, don't just ask them to give a project with the industry and not have the industry take that finding seriously. Make it real. So when you actually connect with the industry, have them say, we have students, they're going to do the work, and you can actually use it. Because if we don't make it real, nobody's invested. The students don't take it seriously, and neither does the industry. But when both have to take it seriously, and the data is actually going to be used, so I know I'm speaking about research, but we could be speaking about design or whatever it is, make sure everybody knows that data is going to be used by those stakeholders, so you got to pull your pants up. Are there any success stories, I mean, it doesn't have to be here, later on, that you could share that uh, with some of our folks in India, the ac academia, so we could learn from some of the experiences you've had and at the institutions. Yeah, I, could, I could go Probably. on. <laughs> no, okay. We've had we've, it, 18 yes. years of good that yeah. we've learned as no, much as since, we have. Since you seem to have cracked uh, this particular yeah. issue. That's all. I, I think it's, it's really just um, it's getting everybody on board and not okay. being dogmatic about the processes. Okay. Um, because, you know, Steve already mentioned, academia can be dogmatic sometimes about... Can be? <laughs> well, they can be. I mean, I want to be polite because there's sometimes mm -hmm. we have to be empathic to academia as well. So mm -hmm. um, there are times sometimes when we end up in a situation and sometimes you just have to call it out and say there's a better way to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but for people to be willing, having that willingness to listen. Okay. Um, and it, it's been a lot of trial and error for us as well. So it's not like we just... You know, figured this all out in one day. But mm -hmm. the nice part about it is, is uh, we took it very seriously. We got feedback from our partners in the industry. Um, I'm in the industry, so mm -hmm. it also reflects on my personal brand and my brand and my organization. So I, I invested a lot of my personal time, and it's it's honestly just a lot of time investment. Okay. But you need to set the boundaries to make sure that everybody who comes to the table does take it seriously, uh, and mm -hmm. often. There's really great things that come out of it. Students, sometimes they, their names are exposed to the people who are receiving the reports. And the next thing you know, I found out the students have been hired because they were just so wowed by the quality of the work. Okay. And that story goes around, and they become an alumni. And an alumni comes back and talks. And it's just sort of, mm -hmm. you know, self-propagating kind yeah. of thing. So it's, it's, there's lots to learn. There's lots I can share. But, um, but I would just amend it by saying everybody's got to take it seriously. Because if you say there's no final report that they're really looking at, and we all know what we're mm -hmm. going to do. Yeah. If I may, yeah. Really? Okay. All right. We've got 10 more minutes. We would like to hear from some of the young people here. 
uh, students and others? Yes. Uh, just your name, which institution you're with, and, or, and then whatever you want to say. Hi, I'm Meru. I'm a fourth year student of design at Triple Office. It, they expect you to do a job. And where I'm coming at is the way we have the roles in the corporates today. So by the time you come with all your design thinking and research, and this is the problem, and that's how I should solve it, and you go to a corporate, and then they say that, you know, design the website, and then you're like, OK. And you're coming back to what nobody wanted design to be, the kind of design we used to criticize at school. And that's what you do until you settle down there and becomes the status quo. And then when you become team lead, you are just like that. And I don't know. That's what I feel. How was that bucket of cold water, huh? <laughs> um, any, any, yeah, will, will, uh, anybody wants to react or respond before you? Yeah, we'll, we'll come to you. So, so as a, the company you're going to join, as I said, interview the interviewer. You will know quickly whether this fellow can take my life or my career ahead. So do that. Uh, is my, my advice to you. And I'll keep it short because okay. we have more questions and yeah. very less time. Yeah. Uh, was it you? Um, since a lot of you uh, just talked about design schools and design thinking and quite a lot, and you people seem to have influence um, about design quite a bit, I just want to make uh, one point to you all where you can, it's an appeal to you all of you because we preach that and uh, accessibility should uh, begin at design. And uh, one of the things we are trying to solve is from the uh, development perspective is introducing the accessibility at the development colleges and universities. But in the actually inclusive design and university universal design should actually be taught in the design schools itself. So you people should actually play a role to um, uh, em emphasize on this and disseminate the information and make sure you all taught the uh, inclusive design right where you start the design courses. Okay, thank you. So did you have anything? Something? I'm a transportation design student. I'm in fourth grade. But I last year I went to Seoul for a whole year. And there I had live projects, like you said. I had live project with Hyundai. And I felt this difference going from here to there you know, the professors and everyone at the design school there was very much indulging us into going, doing more like real projects based on with the actual companies. And here it's more like conceptual. So you come up with a brief that's like in 2030 and you come up with the concept, get it ready. But at the same time, when we come up with the design and we show it to the companies, the companies say that, oh, this is, really vague, you know? We won't provide you internships based on this, and you can't expect a pay on this. So it's like explo exploiting the design students here that graduate. Mm -hmm. So I would just like to know your opinion on, you know, undergraduates here. And if I apply for a master's here, would that be beneficial for me or not? Shakti, you want to take that? or? Anyone to start? And maybe Najiket too. I think uh, if you want to go ahead for masters and all, I think you should do it. Because unless young people like you want to more explore, and definitely uh, you for that, there are new things are also there in India also, and our institute also doing a lot of things. So it's not that case. We are having in a. We are also going agile with the industry. We are trying to incorporate many things along with that. So I think we should go ahead. There's no no one should stop you. So my question was like, should I go up in, in India or should I go outside? And you can you can you two can uh, speak to that too, you know, yes, Steve and Nina, if you want to. You should ask your mind. If you feel you need to do it here, you do it here. If you don't know, you want to go abroad, go abroad. If it's your call, I think there's, we can't, we can't answer for you. So the thing is that there are juniors that are coming up, and we'll go. Yeah, we'll move on. Yeah, we can move on. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it. We'll do that offline. Anybody else? Yes, go ahead. Um, I'm Rahul from my mind. Graduation project, internships. So when I deal with the companies, I uh, usually receive the requirement related with 
uh, uh, not specifically for UX. Mm. Like I receive requirement related with like, uh, uh, there is a requirement for UI UX. So uh, like, uh, like when we share requirement with the students, with the product design, with UX design, with graphic design. So uh, like uh, we have that, uh, uh, that problem with the, uh, like with the industry, like uh, not, they are not sharing the requirement specifically. Like whether they have UX or UI or uh, so, you're, so you're 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 saying that uh, the recruiters are not clear about what they really want. Yeah, definitely because uh, like uh, what I'm like uh, getting from the industry, they have requirement for UI UX, not specifically UI or UX. Okay, but is this, is this widespread? Did you? Yeah, quite, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And uh, anybody wants to speak to that? Is this a systemic problem that... Uh... Lack of specificity and requirements from what, acad oh, sorry, from what industry is looking for is a great example here. Mm -hmm. I also think you're looking at the inner sausage making factory of how people get hired at companies. And unfortunately, there are too many roles involved that aren't necessarily talking with each other. One uh, small point about what I'm seeing, at least out in the Bay Area in the uh, United States, is that over time, when you see UI, that has become code for front-end developer. And so if you see UI slash UX, a lot of times people are trying to get a, a twofer, right? <laughs> or what I would call the mythical unicorn. I don't believe <laughs> unicorns exist. Um, I think that's, I won't see the, say that word. Um, in, on recording, yeah, so Mina can say the word. Um, it, she said the word. So I think what you need to do is call them out and play the prioritization game and say, so when you're hiring for this role, what will be the majority of, of my work? So if you had to stack rank, I'm, I'm assuming from the UI, UX, UI came first for a reason. And are you hiring me because you really need two people and you're going to try to get it with one, which just makes your life terrible? It also makes everybody disappointed. Um, I think, kind of what Prasad was saying, having that candid conversation, reversing that um, interview role is really critical. And the one other thing I'll, I'll pitch is take advantage of the relationships you have with people to find others who aren't directly within the interview chain to understand what it's like to work in that organization. So find another person who is working in UI, UX, and say, what the heck is this? I think I honestly just would can't add to that anymore. Like ditto, exactly. It's uh, I think we, the recruiters in, 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 in the in the couple of minutes we are, you have you want to say anything uh, uh, pertaining to this um, whole matter? I mean, if, if there are any comments you have, you want you have any closing questions? comments. Fifteen seconds, thirty seconds. Can we tell a joke? This is an yes, animal. jokes are acceptable. <laughs> can't tell. There we go. Let okay. Okay. okay, you can think about yours. Well, okay, thirty uh, seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds, okay. okay. So uh, I think uh, it's not the question of UX or UI. It's not the question of because UX is everywhere, right? It is, any design is, it has to be user experience. Uh, but what I want to say that we have to increase the level, level of uh, the faculties. Faculties mm -hmm. in terms of principally what is happening in India, if I'm talking about India, there are a lot of many design institutes are mushrooming, like anything, okay? But there's no faculties, there's no good faculties. Okay, why? Because you, you give that, uh, you know, the dignity also is not there. That level of, as a teaching, as a dignity. And the, when the industry people comes to there, obviously they come as a part-time, they won't come as a full-time, but there are people whom I've interacted, they are interested to come back, but they won't be paid as a good pay right. package. I also myself, I came into lower pay package in, in, in the, because I was doing great. Okay, so how many people are actually interested in this, coming to that, and how can we raise the level okay. so that the design education get the level, and it is not for the design, but it is for the industry, because your is, this is students only going to the industry. Okay. So I think we all have to work on the, some kind of uh, dignity, as well as the discipline, as well as the okay. level of the okay. educator. Any That's 10 seconds, 15 seconds? Uh, okay. Yeah, I know Rahul is here from MIT, and probably there are more students from MIT, and I'm from Pune, so we can have a good collaboration opportunity. I'll just take this platform to suggest that of, I love when I come and teach 
it's fun because it's always nice to give. We take a lot of from the industry, but it's nice to give to the students, especially when they ask questions. Oh, I'm open for a weekend uh, catch up. So, you know, since he's the industry uh, liaison, uh, pester Rahul to say, okay, let's have a schedule with uh, huge designs in Pune and uh, 10 students could come and uh, we could choose a topic. I'll be more than happy to do that. Becomes very difficult for me to get, you know, drop my industry hat and then wear my student, you know, uh, sorry, a teacher hat and then come to MIT all the way to Loni Kalwar and, and do that and say, oh, I'm available for teaching. Oh, but students don't, are not there in the, in the campus on Saturdays. Um, but if you guys are interested, I'm all for it. I'll, I'll be more than happy to give my time there. Fantastic. Did you, did you have something to say, Mina? Did you, anybody? Did you? Okay. Uh, you, you, you'll have the last and final word. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was it, right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I'm starting to get the uh -huh. sultry voice here. Um, I th I, I, as I hear from you all, and this is one of the reasons why I love coming here so much, I think growth mindset is really important. So never stop learning. That goes for all of us. Don't give up when people tell you're doing something wrong. In fact, challenge all the assumptions you're getting and take advantage of your network. We're all here. Network. We're all part of this, this community of user experience and let's, um, let's go do some awesome things. Thanks. Woo! <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Prasad. Thank you, Shakti. A round of applause, folks.